This is Joel Smith, 28.1, part two. Um, I'm talking about the types of behaviour um, within the sport industry. The first uh, type of behaviour is conducted during competition and training. Uh, I think the importance of this um, is, one, being a role model. Uh, two, you could be representing your country, so there'll be millions of people uh, looking up to you. Um, and I think uh, the also another importance is uh, you can gain more fans and gain more publicity, and you're likely to pick. Uh, you're likely to get picked for a game if you uh, conduct your work self well. So say if you were in a training uh, exercise, and you're the one um, conducting yourself well, uh, having a good a good attitude, always wanting to improve. I think the boss is really like probably more likely to pick you because you're the one actually wanting to try and you're the one actually wanting to get into the squad. I think by being a got a role model is really important. Because one, you'll get more publicity, uh, and two, it'll make you look better as a person. Uh, a good example of this would be uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, lots of little kids look up to him, saying, "Oh, they want to be Ronaldo. They want to be, uh, like the best striker, the best goal scorer ever." And uh, he does a lot of um charity work, and uh, he'll go to Nike events and uh, go out of his way um to make little kids' days happy and um to see um others um improve so uh real madrid could put on a day um of uh having little kids train um on the pitch and ronaldo will go along um make everyone look uh feel at home um and i think that will gain him a lot of publicity as well um because people will see him for the real self he is and want him uh, to be a part of the sports industry um i think um the justification of it is uh having a good attitude um i think having a good attitude will get you far um in the importance of conducting during a competition so if you uh, in a jump competition and you're not doing so well if you have the right attitude and the right mentality you will go far and you will start to improve I think uh, the other example was Ronaldo conducts himself well and he tries to be the best possible player. So after training, uh, he'll still go out for another hour or so um, shooting the ball um, into the side net where the keepers can't get it and practice and practice and practice until he gets the best, uh, best he is. Uh, the next type of behaviour is equal opportunities. Um, I think equal opportunities are really important within football and other sports as well. Um, because it makes it more fair. So, a good example of this is women, uh, women's football. Uh, women don't get paid as much as men do. Uh, nowhere near on the scale. Um, and I think that's quite quite unfair because there's a lot of women, uh, good women players that want to make it, and they're getting paid nowhere near, and they can't earn as much as. And I think, yeah, because I think it's okay because. Not many people are going to watch women football compared to men's football. But also, why shouldn't the women have equal rights as the men? And I think prize-related is also, also almost um, as well, because when men play in the Champions League final, they get to play in these really, really big stadiums, really big, nice stadiums, and these women get to play in a, not very nice stadiums and only little ones. Um, and I think... That shouldn't be the case. I think women should have um, even a say in what they what they want to do and um, and what they can and can't do. Um, I think it's you can class it as discrimination towards women, which can actually make individuals feel really bad and feel like they're not good enough and feel like they're not uh, worth anything. Um, and then that, that can affect their lifestyle as well. Uh, types of behaviour, another one, is appropriate role models. I think appropriate role models is really, really important because when you start to become good at football, young children are going to look up to you and have your uh, name on the back of their shirts. And especially if you play for a big club, all these little kids are going to want to be you. Um, and I think it'll um, if you're a really good model, role model, it will look good in you and the club because the club would have brought you in um, not knowing that you're going to be a role model, you've turned into a role model, and then that's ma uh, made like the business side of it really good because they've bought a really good player, and a player that's really wanting to 
um, change his life uh, within football. Um, important being a role model because uh, you're teaching the younger generation um, of how to conduct yourself um, and how you want to be treated like others, um, which is also really important because if you treat others like you want to be treated, then you're going to go far um, and not people aren't going to have a go at you for anything. Uh, I think this can impact sports highly, especially young kids. Um, because they'll copy what you do. So if you like Ronaldo and you go out practicing after hours after everyone else's and you get little kids doing it, then they're going to come better and they're going to be the next generation, which is really, really important. Um, enhancing the status of the sport, another type of behaviour. Um, I think this will get more people involved. Um, a good example of this would be the London Olympics. So when the London Olympics held, it was uh, done really, really well. Um, and it, and even the little sports in it, it got more people wanting to do it and wanting to take part. Uh, the London Olympics was made really, really well and put together well. And um, if you're getting little kids to start competing in the th these things, then the future of the events is going to be really good. Um, and you're going to be getting people, loads of people trialing and trialing and trialing. And eventually you're going to find a really, really good person uh, to take over the sport. Uh, this gets more people involved and it starts to become more entertaining because if there's like if there's the same old people then it may get a bit boring but once you start adding new people in um and new rivalry then it's going to uh, then it's going to be really good um the only downside would be it would it would maybe cost a lot because if you're starting to add more people in then it's just going to add more money into it um i think another consequence could be people could be harsh towards each other so if you're trialing um, for the Olympics, uh, people could be harsher than you because people could be better than you. Um, it's the same for any day life, um, but people uh, could put you down, um, discriminate against you, which obviously can um, affect your life. Another type of behaviour is encouragement of young performers to reach uh, the level of excellence. Um, the importance of this is um, make young youngsters succeed. Uh, so a good uh, example of this is James, James Madison when he came through the academy at uh, Coventry and then went up to Coventry first team and then uh, came to Norwich. But it's like all these academy players, uh, they are the future of the sport. So if you're pushing these youngsters to go up, go far, um, then it's just going to make the club better and it's going to make the football industry much better. Uh, James Madison was bought from cheap also. Um so Norwich done a really, really good bit of profit, um, really good bit of business. Uh, it's a good investment. Like these academy players, uh, you pick them up, you don't pay anything for them. Uh, you keep them at the club, and then when they're 18, you can give them a contract, which is also really important um, because it will make the, uh, the footballer feel really, really good. And um, it will make the club feel good because they'll feel like they've bought a really, really good player and they can make a bit of profit if they need to sell him. Um... And also, uh, he could become a star for you, like Wayne Rooney. He came through the ranks of Man United through the academy, and people slated him, and then he proved everyone wrong, and he become one of Man United's greatest legends. Um, impacts on sport really well. It gives players confidence, and it gives them belief in themselves. So if a manager really, really believes in a player, then it, the, the player would feel really good and feel like he could achieve anything, um, which is also really important. Uh, the last... Uh, type of behaviour is increasing participation for all. Um, the importance of this is to make feel uh, make people feel like they aren't left out. So, like uh, Norwich um, do uh, charity events and things for disabled people and people with uh, disabilities, which is also I think really really good because it feels like then it, they feel like they're worth something and they can do uh, like what other people um, can do as well. I feel like they're not left out. And also, I think it keeps the sport alive because even for youngsters, if you put on events, um, then you could find a, a future star. And um, if you stop uh, doing the event, then it's just going to get boring and then eventually the sport will die out. Um, I think this is also really, really important because it uh, you can do charity events for all classes, uh, such as disabled people. Uh, which is also really important as well because you can just make them feel like they're worth something and make their day, which is also really important. 
and I think it will give the sport a bigger name uh, and it will attract more people because if um, you get in a disabled person, then there might be another disabled person watching thinking, oh, yeah, I want to have a go at that, even though I'm like maybe in a wheelchair or on crutches or other uh, can't be doing any other things, then they feel like they can get involved and they can start telling other people and then it will just start spreading the word, which is also really, really important. It's been Joel Smith, 28.1, part two.